welcome all our topic for discussion is naturalistic plays naturalism is an international movement in prose fiction and theater that flourished in the late 19th century and in the early years of the 20th century it developed the existing tradition of realism in the direction of fully documented accuracy of representation of social and economic circumstances with additional deterministic emphasis on the supposed scientific laws of human behavior understood to be governed by heredity and economic necessity naturalist art and literature depict social conditions heredity and environment as inescapable forces in shaping human character and attempt to create an accurate representation of nature and character for which a great attention is provided to details but does not exclude a concern for capturing the beauty of the subject emily zola 1840 to 1902 of france is the pioneering practitioner of naturalism in prose fiction and the chief exponent of its doctrines his novel there is requiem 1867 together with the goncourt brothers gemini lazato are considered as making the beginning of the movement there is requiem served as a model for naturalistic playwrights though the play failed on the stage but its focus on a woman who destroys herself under the pressures of society and its detailed treatment of psychological struggle is considered as a standard features of plays by Henrik Ibsen or Augustus Strindberg the major naturalist playwrights his most substantial and important achievement in french fiction is the series of 20 novels he wrote between 1871 and 1893 under the general title of le rogan macot elphons dodet guy de mopsan and in his early fiction Joris Carl Huysmans are the other French writers who share the ideas of naturalism. In Britain, some of the ambitions and effects of naturalism are to be found echoed or adapted in novels of the 1890s and beyond, notably in George Moore's Esther Waters (1894), Thomas Hardy's Jude the Obscure (1895), Somerset Maugham's Lisa of Lambeth (1897). Frank Norris's Macdeg 1899, Theodore Dreiser's Sister Carrie 1900, and Arnold Bennett's Anna of the Five Towns 1902, among many others. In the United States, naturalism sprang up independently, but the Russian and French models stimulated American writers. These writers tried to present their subjects with scientific objectivity and with elaborate documentation. sometimes including an almost medical frankness about activities and bodily functions usually unmentioned in early literature in the realm of theater naturalists viewed that theater should examine life scientifically they were interested in the details including the sordid crude aspects and did not believe in selectivity therefore they included all the details as seen in life in fact This was in contrast to other approaches towards theater. Naturalistic plays prescribed lifelike scenery, costumes, and methods of acting as a way of life. The action on stage is simplified and lifelike. Characters seem psychologically motivated and physiologically correct in the way that looked and presented on stage. they tend to choose characters who exhibit strong animal drives such as greed and sexual desire and who are helpless victims both of physiological factors within and of sociological pressures without often characters in naturalistic plays are considered as the victims of their own circumstance and are seen as helpless products of their environment the characters are often working class or lower class sordid subject matter which was previously considered as taboo on the stage in any serious manner example suicide poverty prostitution 
is explored in naturalistic plays. The naturalistic writing exposes the darkness of life, including poverty, violence, racism, corruption and disease. Acting in a naturalistic drama is such that the actors are encouraged to completely ignore the presence of an audience. For example, turning one's back to the audience is allowed in naturalistic drama and is hardly seen in a realistic performance. An analysis of a few naturalist plays can enable better understanding of the notion of naturalism in theatre, character depiction and subject matter. Ibsen's A Doll's House focuses on the contemporary lives of the budding middle class. Torvald, the banker, nearly faces a scandal from a debt incurred by his wife Nora who forged her father's signature on a loan to cover expenses when Torvald was deathly ill. Nora manages to resolve the situation but rather than allying with her husband after the ordeal, Nora revolts against the forces and restrictions of a patriarchal society that made her unable to act as an equal partner during the crisis. In his 1881 play, Ghosts, Ibsen proposes how cause and effect could put an entire generation into turmoil without the intervention of supernatural forces. Oswald, a promising young artist, returns to his mother's home after suffering from an unknown illness. His mother, Helen, spends the fortune of her late husband's estate on charitable works which she does to cover up the bad name earned by her husband, a womanizer. By doing so, she wants to ensure that Oswald inherits nothing from her husband, whom she still hates. But the son gets contracted congenital syphilis from his father's infidelities, of which he was otherwise unaware. Here, the law of cause and effect is achieved through natural means. Strindberg's Miss Julie dramatizes a secret liaison between Julie, the daughter of a nobleman, and Jean, a servant in her family's employment. Strindberg has set all of the events of the play during the course of a single afternoon. He also shuns theatrical device when Julie and Jean go off stage to have sex, a dance that takes place during the middle of the play. However, Strindberg grounds even this event in the setting of a festival that occupies the household and staff and enables Julie and Jean's union. When Julie returns, the shame of her actions and the natural force of her emotions compels her to commit suicide. In yet another of Strindberg's naturalistic play, Creditors, the painter Gustav befriends Adolf at a seaside resort. A fact is unknown to Adolf that Gustav is the first husband of his wife, Tekla. Gustav comes to take revenge on Tekla's new marriage. Strindberg examines in the play the psychological forces of guilt, betrayal, shame and esteem that drive human action. The historical milieu in which naturalistic plays emerged needs to be explored. As mentioned earlier, naturalism saw its genesis in the 19th century. It was a period that witnessed radical changes in the European society in terms of science and technology. The urbanization following industrial revolution made crowds of people move into cities and there emerged a new middle class which had more free time than ever before. As a result of it, theatre became a more fashionable way of spending leisure time and it grew in popularity. Soon, larger playhouses were built and these theatres were lit with gas after 1870s. The invention of gas lighting made night theatre more accessible for more people as it replaced the necessity of thousands of candles. This later got changed to limelight and then electric lighting in 1881. The invention of steam engine had a great impact on the development of theatre 
as it made possible to transport theatres to areas that had never regular access to the theatre. Consequently, theatre productions began to tour even America. For most of the century, particularly in continental Europe, the standard style of acting was histrionic, usually codified gestures to display heightened emotion. There were three main types of plays, romantic plays, well-made plays and melodramas during the period. The romantic writers rejected all the rigid rules that were followed by playwrights of neoclassical period claiming that playwright needed no rules. Melodramas emphasized action with spectacular and exaggerated stage effects and they were always accompanied by music and song that sustained a tense mood throughout the play. The characters were either totally good or totally bad in nature with victory of good over bad highlighted. The well-made plays as the name refers to the structure of the play builds to a climax through the development of plot, events that take place and ends logically. New scientific and technological inventions were bound to affect the way theatre was produced. The ways in which the plays were written were also changing. So, it is at this juncture that the newly emerged scientific and mechanized society demanded a more reasonable and logical ending to the plots in the plays. So, the period witnessed the popularity of stars who had complete freedom to choose where and when they had to say their line of dialogue. They took few rehearsals under a major head actor and would perform in the play till this trend radically changed during the late 19th century. Following the industrial revolution and also the scientific developments and the philosophical skepticism in Europe, the social reformers of the last two decades of the century probed into the causes of human behavior and postulated that the meaning of human character was to be found in its interaction with the physical, social and economic environment. The new theatre demanded truthfulness in the writing of plays and also in the acting and stage setting. The actors were expected to ignore the audience and to behave and speak as though at home. Thus, during this age, individuals known as directors tried to create a unified stage picture in which all of the visual elements of the plays matched each other and visually suggested the same historical period. The directors took care to match the costume of the characters that reflected the fashion that was popular in the time. Madame Westris, Henry Irving in London, Richard Wagner and Duke of saxe meiningen in Germany are the well-known directors of the period. Encyclopedia Britannica informs that, quote, naturalism in literature extended the tradition of realism aiming at an even more faithful, unselective representation of reality, a veritable slice of life presented without moral judgment. But naturalism differed from realism in its assumption of scientific determinism which led naturalistic authors to emphasize man's accidental physiological nature rather than his moral or rational qualities. Individual characters were seen as helpless products of heredity and environment motivated by strong institutional drives from within and harassed by social and economic pressures from without. As such, they had little will or responsibility for their fates and the prognosis for their cases was pessimistic at the outset." Unquote. During the early period of 19th century, state scenery was mainly the painted black cloths of restoration drama and later it was replaced by three-dimensional reproductions of interiors and the elaborate impressions of natural effects. Christopher Eynes provides a detailed account of the evolution of stage setting during the period. Around 1830, the first box set was introduced in London which was later used to create a credible physical context for dramatic characters. The court theatre of the small German state of saxe meiningen under the artistic direction of its duke took on the second major step 
on stage setting. The Duke had an enthusiasm for Charles Keane's historically accurate staging of Shakespeare in the 1850s and this led him to develop an ensemble dedicated to archaeologically authentic productions. Each production was prepared in meticulous detail and extensively rehearsed and the Minigan Company gained more reputation with its first German tour in 1874. They widely toured Europe up to 1890, creating new standards of authenticity for stage, though this was largely limited to a pictorial effect. Their production was seen by Ibsen in Berlin and by George Bernard Shaw in London, 1881. Ibsen's involvement with the Menningen Company in 1876 had exposed him to the possibilities for using authentic detail in the setting. Andre Anton was deeply impressed by the Menningen handling of crowd scenes and rehearsal techniques which was done amidst the stage setting. Stanislavski saw the production in St. Petersburg in 1885 and Moscow in 1896 and was particularly influenced by the archaeological accuracy in staging historical plays. In 1898, a new theatre company was founded in Moscow, named as the Moscow Art Theatre by, by Stanislavski together with the playwright and director Vladimir Nemirovich Dachenko that successfully staged the lower depths in the naturalist mode. Regarding the characterization, Eins proposes that it is the basis of naturalism, whereas it was the plot in both melodrama and the well-made plays which is the dominant element. When earlier romantic protagonists exhibited singular passionate temperament, there was ambiguity of motive in the protagonists of naturalist plays. He states that, quote, this ambiguity is combined with a complex treatment of central figures. Although naturalistic drama may contain explicit moral messages, for instance, Brooks plays campaigning for birth control or dealing with the evils of prostitution and strong social criticism as in several of Ibsen's plays, including A Doll's House or Ghosts. The way the characters are portrayed precludes moral judgments." Unquote. Naturalistic the theatre created a world that could almost be our own through the use of set and props. Real soil or sometimes pet animals were also brought into the stage. There is the conception of fourth wall which is invisible and is an imaginary one that exists between the audience and the performers on stage. For a stage set to be original, striking and authentic, it should first of all be built in accordance with something seen, whether a landscape or an interior. If it is an interior, it should be built with its four sides, its four walls without worrying about the fourth wall which will later disappear, so as to enable the audience to see what is going on. The root of naturalist movement closely relies on a biological theory of natural selection of Darwin in the 19th century, which held that a human being exists entirely in the order of nature and does not have a soul nor any access to a religious or spiritual world beyond the natural world, and therefore that such a being is merely a high order animal whose character and behavior are entirely determined by two kinds of forces, heredity and environment. Each person inherits compulsive instincts, especially hunger, the drive to accumulate positions and, sex and sexuality and is then subjected to the social and economic forces in the family, the class and the milieu into which that person is born. This suggests that the philosophy of naturalism is contrastive to that of supernaturalism, that is, there is denial of faith based view of nature and the consideration of physical nature with no souls and other metaphysical beliefs. The Center for Naturalism defines naturalism as, quote, the understanding that there is a single natural world as shown by science and that we are completely included in it.
unquote. Naturalism holds that everything we are and do is connected to the rest of the world and derived from conditions that precede us and surround us. Each of us is an unfolding natural process and every aspect of that process is caused and is a cause itself. Unquote. Naturalism extends the causal law of nature to humans and this had profound implications. This leads to the understanding that human beings are connected with the rest of the nature in a real sense and not in any mystical sense. Other than Darwin's evolutionary theories of biology that is recorded in his, in his on the origin of species 1859, it is Claude Bernard's scientific observation of human physiology 1865 and Karl Marx's economic analysis of society Das Kapital 1867 and later on Sigmund Freud's work on psychology on the physical mechanism of hysterical phenomena with Charcot 1893, the interpretation of dreams 1900 that had primary influences on the naturalistic environment. The naturalist writers are criticized for they acted as social scientists as they were concerned with and provided minute detail of their place setting which acquired the status of scientific evidence. Naturalism was attacked in the post-war theatre which suggests the rejection of the tendency to equate the plays and productions so described with this kind of unmediated documentary. It is argued that the naturalist details such as the box set looked so flat fussy and irrelevant. Arnold Wesker, the British dramatist, rejected the naturalist label arguing that it is a contradiction in terms, it does not exist and it is an, it is an impossibility because reality is quite obviously every minute detail. Naturalism pretended to be reality, was unselective and therefore doomed to failure. Another main objection to naturalism was that it marginalized questions of form and method so much that it suppressed reality. However, naturalism is not only a historical style which reached the stage in the last decades of the 19th century, but it forms the basis for mainstream plays and performances throughout the modern period and is still the dominant theatrical form today. Indeed, naturalism introduced a quintessentially modern approach and define the qualities of modern drama. Revolutionary in its own time, it has become the standard against which all subsequent stylistic experiments have measured themselves and therefore deserves particular attention. It is now time to summarize the session. Naturalism is one of the key moments in modern theatre that emerged during the last two decades of 19th century. Naturalist art and literature depict social conditions, heredity and environment as inescapable forces in shaping human characters and attempt to create an accurate representation of nature and character for which a great attention is provided to detail but does not exclude a concern for capturing the beauty of the subject. The duration of naturalism is short lived and it emerged in the post civil war in America period directly after the time of realism. Sometimes naturalism is considered as a more specialized branch of realism. Instead of, it, of determining that human life and fate are based on their actions and belief, naturalism explained the underlying causes for those actions and beliefs, the mysterious forces of nature. Naturalism uses the principles of evolution theory for its foundation. Emily Zola of France is the dominant practitioner of naturalism in prose fiction and the chief exponent of its doctrines. Naturalistic theatre created a world that could almost be our own through the use of set and props. The root of naturalist movement relies heavily on the 19th century Darwinian biological theory of natural selection that held a human being exists entirely in the order of nature and does not have a soul or any access to a religious or spiritual world beyond the natural world. 
Before we move on to the next session, please try to answer the following questions. The influence of naturalistic theatre on literature and art. Stanislavski's influence on the world theatre. Adaptations of naturalistic plays in other media. The references to this session are A Handbook of Literary Terms by M. H. Abrahams and Jeffrey Galt Harpam, New Delhi, Cengage Learning Publications, 2011. The Oxford Companion to English Literature, edited by Dina Birch, OUP, New York, 2009. A source book on naturalist theatre by Christopher Eines, Rutledge, London, 2002. A guide to naturalism from the Centre for Naturalism, web source, 20th November, 2016. Hope you have had a productive and very fruitful session. See you next time. Until then, goodbye.